human factors is about making it easier to do the right thing. If we make it easier to do the right thing, it also becomes harder for us to do the wrong thing. I'm sure you have heard the phrase, to err is human. Human error is human nature. We make little mistakes all the time, just because we are human. At home, they do not often have significant consequences. For instance, you forget to pick up your keys, or you pick up the wrong item in the supermarket because the packaging looks similar. If you have ever tried to make a cup of tea or coffee in someone else's kitchen, you will understand how being unfamiliar with where things are stored can affect our ability to do a job quickly and easily. Making a hot drink becomes harder, not because you don't know how to make a drink, but because the layout of the room means you can't find things easily. These same principles apply when we try and do something for our patients. If you have ever wondered how we can try and prevent things like this happening, then the science of human factors can provide the answers. It can explain why we make mistakes and how we can design the workplace to make it easier to do our jobs. Human factors describes how we interact with everything in the workplace, the physical environment, with equipment, and with the processes of care that set out how we are supposed to do things at work. Our ability to perform at our best is also affected if we feel tired and hungry. The culture of the organisation is also important, as this affects how everybody behaves and what happens when a mistake occurs. Everyone makes trade-offs when faced with the choice of doing something according to the policy as opposed to just getting it done. This is especially the case if work is very busy, there are time pressures and the system isn't designed to make it easy to do the right thing. For instance, a patient may be unwell and the policy says they should have their observations done every hour. However, there are a lot of unwell patients on the ward. All the monitors that the nurse is used to using are currently being used on other patients. There is another monitor available, but because this is different to the rest, the nurse is unsure how to use it correctly. Rather than try to use a piece of equipment that she is not familiar with, she waits until a different monitor becomes free. In the meantime, the patient deteriorates and this goes unnoticed. In this situation, the nurse knew that the patient needed frequent monitoring and observations, but did not provide them. The reason she did not provide them was not because she didn't know what to do, but because the equipment she was asked to use was different to all other equipment. This is an example of where having standardised equipment would have made it easier to do the right thing. The science of human factors can also help us investigate the way we work, find out why errors occurred, and help design better ways of working. The aim is not to be critical, but to gain a better understanding of exactly what makes their life difficult and what makes their life easy. Human factors awareness helps us prevent errors and helps us understand why mistakes occurred. This doesn't just mean when things go wrong, but also near misses as well. However, it only helps us if we are really honest in our investigations and acknowledge the real reasons why things go wrong. In doing this, we need to look beyond what happened when things go wrong. We need to go all the way back through the system and look at decisions made across the organisation that contributed to the error. This may include decisions made about planning and procurement of equipment. When investigating errors, human factors can help provide a better explanation of why the error occurred. In the example of the nurse and the monitors, it would be inappropriate to just blame the nurse, because part of the cause of the error was down to equipment design and lack of standardisation across the organisation. We can't do this on our own. It is important that we all play a part in this, all the way from the ward, to the managers, to the hospital board. The more people that understand why human factors is important, the better care we can provide. The willingness of an organisation to recognise and act on these sorts of contributory problems is a good marker of the organisation's approach to improving safety and quality of care. Ideally, organisations should have an open and fair culture that encourages reporting of incidents so that everyone can learn from mistakes and near misses. We can also learn how to improve care by looking at areas where things work well. 
These areas have often found solutions to problems and already worked out how to do things better. It is this organisational culture that has an impact on how we treat our colleagues and what happens to staff when mistakes and errors do occur. If we do this, then we can design the workplace so it is easier to do the right thing. This makes our jobs easier and reduces the chance of mistakes occurring and causing harm to patients. Applying a human factors approach to the delivery of healthcare makes it easier to do the right thing and can improve the quality of care that patients receive. <laughs>